Sponsored by Moft. As another Techtober takes another year off my life, and the notion of a video review on YouTube continues to evolve, I want to start talking more about not just single products, but how those products can bring more value by working together. I'm already working on videos that'll talk about how different brands try to accomplish this with their various ecosystems, but Apple, thanks to its sheer scale, has an additional advantage that I've been envious of for, well, for most of the 13 years I've been an Android user. A rich constellation of accessories made just for the iPhone. Over the years, I've been lucky enough to get to know a few companies that make a lot of this stuff. And for this video, I've rounded up a handful of my personal favorites. As I've said many times over many years, I'm a huge fan of wireless charging. And a big reason for that is that when I'm falling asleep scrolling Reddit, I can just roll over and drop my phone on a stand instead of hunting for wherever my cable is. This, by the way, is the old 12 South High Rise, which I've been using since 2019. And in the years since its release, chargers have expanded to accommodate every Apple device you carry with you. This is the new High Rise 3 Deluxe, and it adds an Apple Watch charging pad down low to complement its higher altitude iPhone charger in a similar layout to Belkin's Boost Charge Pro. But the High Rise takes it a step further by also including a pad back aft for your AirPods. Or, for fellow adherents to the Captain Two Phones lifestyle, any additional device that supports Qi wireless charging. Of course, 12 South isn't the only name in the game. Nomad first came to my attention a few years back thanks to their excellent Kevlar all-in-one charging cables and leather cases for earbuds. More recently, they've made headlines for their eye-catching bands for the Apple Watch and Watch Ultra, and not to mention this delightful little 35-watt GAN charger that I'm eager to test on the flights I'm taking this week. <laughs> Look how tiny! But the company is also adept at making big, heavy things. Because with magnetic charging, big and heavy is what you want to make sure the charger stays where you put it. For years, I've used the company's simple zinc alloy MagSafe mount to charge my iPhones, and the new simply named Stand integrates the charging puck while upgrading the fit and finish to metal and glass. But the triple threat, the big and beefy Base One Max, bundles in the adjacent Apple Watch and AirPods chargers in a lie-down configuration that doesn't appeal nearly as much to me, but different strokes for different folks. By the way, all these are linked in the description for your convenience, but I don't play the affiliate game much anymore, so feel free to just Google them by name if that's easier for you. Now, of course, you don't just charge at home. Sometimes you need a top up when you're out and about. Well, I was recently talking tech over white wine with a friend of the channel, Andrew Martinick, and he told me that in his experience, a lot of people don't know that MagSafe batteries even exist. And that's wild to me, because if I carried an iPhone, that's one of the first accessories I'd buy for it. But sure, it's less efficient than a wired battery pack, but it's also a lot smaller than most. And I love the cable-free simplicity of just slapping it on there. Apple discontinued its own MagSafe battery pack, probably thanks to the demise of the lightning port that was required to charge it. But many other vendors still make them in all kinds of fun colors and finishes, including today's sponsor. More often than not, when you see me share a photo like this in a review, I didn't have someone else take it. I shot it myself using something like Moft's invisible tripod. It earns its name. It folds flat and super slim when you don't need it, riding low profile style with MagSafe on the back of your iPhone. Deploy it, and it unfolds in the clever style Moft has come to be known for, transforming into a tripod with tilt action, so you can snap a selfie or a webcam session, or just keep an eye on your notifications at a comfortable angle. To protect the iPhone itself, there's Moft's Snap Leather Case. It's textured vegan leather with more scratch resistance and color retention than some other cases. But what's snappy about it? Well, it's got two times stronger magnets for a more secure MagSafe connection, and you can snap on Moft's lanyard to make it a sling case and keep your pockets bulge free. Whether you want to prop up your laptop or hang your tablet on a wall, Moft has so much to choose from to keep your accessory game on point. Hit the link in the description to get yours, and thanks to Moft for sponsoring this video. Now, those of you who already knew my feelings about wireless chargers also probably know my feelings on cases. 
personally, I'm just not a big fan because I'm a professional geek who doesn't like to cover up the often admirable design expression that's been engineered into these smartphones. But about a decade ago, a kind of bizarre product hit the scene that actually made me wish I had an iPhone just so I could carry it and my wallet inside what looked like an old leather-bound book, the aptly named book book case. But like I said, that was 10 years ago. So imagine my delight when I called up 12 South to ask if they still made it. And yeah, they sent one over for my iPhone 15 Pro Max review sample alongside that high-rise charger. I'm also happy to say the BookBook case hasn't changed all that much in the decades since it debuted. It's still a leather folio with space for your license and a few credit cards on the left and your iPhone on the right. You can fold it back on itself to watch videos, and it closes magnetically to protect the phone when not in use. Now, it is chunkier than most cases, for sure, but it has been re-engineered for the modern era of MagSafe, with a separate case, also leather, that lives on your phone, so you can separate it from the wallet to use it a bit more easily, or top it up on a charger. And while we're throwing it back, five years ago, before smartphones could even be counted on to carry multiple cameras, there was moment. These folks made quite a splash with these big, beautiful pieces of glass that let me press my Pixel 2 into service as an ultra-wide B-roll shooter, or a macro capture cam to snap the latest Snapdragons up close. Now, when phones started to sprout a second or, you know, a seventh lens, I honestly wondered what would become of Moment. But the company pivoted to a broader focus on all things photo and video. And the modern manifestation of that is this utterly insane mobile studio for the iPhone. Rugged MagSafe compatible cases, specialized filters for ND, diffusion, and bloom, more accessories than I could ever fit in my daily carry and a mobile filmmaking cage packed with cold shoes upon which to mount it all. This is easily the most elaborate phone camera upgrade I've ever beheld, let alone held. And more broadly, it's another example of a point I explored a bit in my last iPhone video, why Apple is winning. When you have a total addressable market of 1.3 billion people using iPhones, well, it just makes a lot more economic sense for an accessory maker to develop for the four new iPhones every year instead of the umpteen Android alternatives, all of which make up a share that's larger overall, but smaller individually. Oh, a little inside baseball here. I've had an up-close look at the world of iPhone accessory design recently, and I'm excited to share more about that over the next few months. Stay tuned. Of course, a byproduct of an accessory ecosystem that vast is that I couldn't even get close to covering everything I wanted in this video, and I hope you'll share some of your own suggestions down in the comments. On the way out the door, though, I would like to close out with a couple honorable mentions. Even though I don't love cases, I do appreciate good design. And Casetify recently teamed up with nothing, yes, the phone folks, to bring that company's transparent tech aesthetic to the iPhone. And for gamers, the Razer Kishi and the Backbone each bring the tactile button and key controls that, frankly, I find necessary to give pretty much any mobile game the time of day. And of course, these will only become more important as Apple rolls out more console-quality games in the future. I haven't covered these directly, but David Kogan has in his iPhone 15 coverage at The Unlocker, which I will also link below. Oh, and to end on a high note, for those of us still enjoying life on the Google side of the garden, these will each work with Android phones as well. Folks, I hope this video exposed some of you to new iPhone accessories, or at the very least, helped with your holiday shopping plans for the Apple eaters in your life. If so, please share it and subscribe to The Mr. Mobile if you'd like to see more videos like this. This piece was produced thanks to review samples provided by Apple and the manufacturers featured herein, but with the exception of the sponsor Moft, none of those companies had editorial input or copy approval, nor did they furnish compensation in exchange for coverage. Until next time, from Michael Fisher, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.